Good day and welcome back to Homer Watson Gallery's art segments. I'm Scott McNichol again and I want to show you how you can make your own homemade paints. There's a lot of ways in which you can make paints, there's no doubt about that. But there are some simple materials that you can find just around in the kitchen and even in your kids play box. So I want to show you right now the two things that are most important in making paint because when you understand that you'll understand best of how it all comes together. Okay, the first thing we need here is pigment. Now pigment, <coughs> large word, it's just a powdered color and then all around the world we find different minerals and stuff like that. That is traditionally how all pigments came to us and even now we still get a lot of those kind of things but sometimes we manufacture them. This is artist chalk actually and artist chalk is a very dense thing. You can buy some of these kits at art stores and stuff like that for about eight to twelve dollars and you get a variety of different very dense chalkish colors. This works very much like the minerals that we find throughout nature and it still needs a little bit of work to make it for what we need for paint. I broke off a small section right here and we do, as with hundreds of years of actually crushing and making the pigments for that, we still have to crush it as well. There are many tools to be able to crush one of these little pieces of chalk. One of the simplest ones I find is just a, a glue stick. Keep the lid on and take it and whomever is working with you or working, you could just take it and crush it down. There is no need for pounding. Pounding is not necessary, it's just force down. If it's hard to get with a big chunk, you might want to go with some smaller chunks, easy enough. But as you grind and grind and grind, just as we have done, many apprentices for centuries have done this work for every one of their artist masters. And then the artist would take that pigment and put it together with something more to make paint. As you can see, I'm taking time to make sure that it's as fine as possible. And the finer you get it by wiggling and pressing down, the better your paint will be. Topping that off and always clean the top off with a paper towel when you're done with it so that you can crush other colors and not get that color into it. Now the second part of paint now that we have a pigment or powdered color is actually a binder. A binder binds it together, holds it together, makes the paint go from one place to another. And a simple way to do that is, as for many, many centuries, is just add water to it. So if I take water and I put that right in here and I put it together, I'm binding together the pigment, the powdered color, and with that I can take it from one place to another and now I have simply a red, a red watercolor paint. I get into my work all the time. So red uh, watercolor, water, binds together the pigment, the powder color, and that is how we get the term watercolor paint. So that's simple in a lot of ways, okay? Now on the other hand though, we have a modern type of paint called acrylic. And what's interesting is, is that acrylic is not much different than today's white glues. And these white glues, if we take a little bit of white glue, it is actually a very strong material to hold together the pigment. So it binds it together very well. And many white glues actually dry waterproof, just like regular acrylics. And if we take a bunch of the pigment and we mix it in to our binder, which in this case being white glue, we will get a paint, an acrylic paint actually. I'm going to just scoop a little bit more into this one little area. This always tends to be a little bit thicker and depending on how much you put to it, you can get a nice rich red paint that will dry, in most cases, very waterproof and it will be very solid. So we get watercolor and we get acrylic like paint right here. And another paint that's been around for centuries is oil paint. But that is one of those things where oil is not easy to clean up. So we're going to stick with water based materials. And with white glues, we can always wash our brushes out in water. Now, we can't always go out to the store and buy a nice fancy colored chalk, but we can make some of that kind of stuff here at home much easier. And one of the things we definitely need is food coloring. So we've got three different food colors, our primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. They're actually called painter's primaries, but we're going to use those to make ourselves something similar to this right now. Now this takes a little time to do, so it's not an immediate thing, but it will give you a nice dense chalk. 
by taking some of your color like this and putting it into water and making it very, very, very dense. So the more you put in, the stronger it will be. Now, most boys and girls have some white chalk sitting around for sidewalk chalk that they can draw with. And they have colored ones too, which you could use, but they are not all that strong. If you take uh, moms and dads, whoever's with you, and you could break it up into smaller pieces, not too small, you don't want to make it into a powder, but the smaller the pieces, the better it is if you take it and you put them into a container of colored water. Now, as it sits in here, I would recommend about a half day of sitting into the actual colored water. When it gets done, and you, a half day is a good amount of time for it to soak straight into all the actual chalk. As often, if you leave it too little, you will only get part of it when you actually break it open. I have an example of that rig over here. Later on, using a paint, a little tray like this, we can see that it soaked through most of it in about 20 minutes, half an hour, but there is still a little bit left inside there. So the longer the soaking, the better it will be for it. The hard part is you have to leave it dry overnight. So this means is that when you pull it out of the container using tweezers, tongs, or anything, you want to set it into a little, let the our paper plate is a very good idea because it lets all that soak into it while it's drying out. And leave that overnight in a nice warm area. And when it's dry, you end up with a piece, depending on how dark you make it, that is rich enough to be used to crush. This has been sitting for a long time in another type of food dye, and this gives me the blue. And if I, again, taking paper towel, clean off the top, as I said earlier, and remember, this is something that we're ready to do the next day, but we can crush it up into the fine powder like we had before, which again is the technical name or the important name, pigment. And if we were to use that with water, we now would have ourselves a blue watercolor paint. So that is one uh, way in which we, as artists, can get our own types of pigments and paints made. Another way, actually, is very interesting, is something that also you can find easily around the home, and that is flour, water, and salt mix. Now, we have a binder which is a glue here, but we don't always have this kind of glue available. So one of the most natural glues that we can make and use is flour, water, and salt. I'll explain the salt in a minute, but what we need to start with though is, is that we have about a half cup of water right here, and we have a teaspoon right here. I like to take at least five large teaspoons, okay? One, two, Oh, I said large. Three, four, five. And if we're doing any of this at home, it would be wisest to work with moms and dads for sure. You would definitely want to work alongside uh, on a table that is actually, you know, a kitchen table. Food dyes get into things, which is something we're using next again. So it's best to actually have newspapers or plastic put down underneath it. But the newspapers, I get up a lot easier than plastic, so it's wiser to use that. Now, we've got five large scoops of this. If you put too much in, it becomes way too pasty. If you put too little in, it's just a little too runny. So half a cup of water, and we're putting in here about five large teaspoons of actually just regular flour. Now, I'm totally trying to mix this up. Sometimes I like to let it sit for a few minutes and then stir again and again and again. Now, when we get this, we get a nice sort of runny paste, okay? Now, this would be just fine on its own, except it actually has the ability to create mildew or rot because it's just flour, it's natural. And one of the ways of stopping that is to use salt. So in paper mache mixes, as well as any of the uh, Play-Dohs and materials like that we get, we want to use salt or a thing called alum to keep it from getting moldy. So we take about a salt, it's just about a teaspoon as well for the amount we mixed up. 
put it in and stir it thoroughly around so that it gets into all the areas of that actual mix. This will keep it from getting any kind of moldiness over time. When we get this thoroughly mixed, we can now get into our other paint idea. Now, take a jar and I'm going to take that, put it over to the side here, and I am going to pour only a little bit in because you actually mix up an awful lot of this. So if you've got many colors, that's okay. But the more you put in, the more of the food dyes you need to make it a dark color. So you've got to be very, very careful not to have it too, too dark or too heavy and too much. So start in small amounts, okay? Taking just a little bit into the jar there and then start mixing in your food dye. I like to start with about 20 drops. 20 drops gives me just about enough darkness that I can use for it. You can go more, you can go less, but actually the amount of drops you use is really just how much and how dark you want your color to be, okay? Now if we also take our brush and or spoon and we mix it around thoroughly into there, we now have a pasty version of yellow paint. Very natural, very simple. Again, I'm using flour, salt, and water, half a cup of flour. Okay, put about five big table, uh, teaspoons into the actual um, container of water, and then mix it up, put uh, about a teaspoon of salt into it, and you get yourself a yellow paint. Again, the yellow that you have, or the darkness you have, is really the amount of food dye you put into it as well. The food coloring is the strong sort of pigment that we use. So to finish, when we're looking at how to make our own paints at home, there's a couple of simple items you can use, a food color, and our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. We can either make our own type of chalk, and that chalk, colored chalk, can be then, when dried out, crushed into a very fine powder, which is pigment, and then mixed together with uh, white glue, water, or we can go with our other mix, and add it as well, is our flour, water, and salt mix. And that actually gives it a really good paste in order to finish with putting your colors into. And don't take too much, add as much color as you need, and when it's done there, just paint away.